Take your Bibles, turn with me to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, if you would. We're going to be taking a look at this next, uh, we only have three more messages to go after this one in the series on, on, the, uh, on the armor of God. Uh, we are on the helmet, and this is the last one on the helmet of salvation today, uh, called the protection of God's love. Now, we, we saw Tim's firefighter helmet and I have a feeling there's going to be some little boys that are going to be trying it on uh, after the service, or at least wanting to try it on, so you might want to claim it pretty quickly. Um, but anyway, uh, when we talk about the protection of God's love, it functions much like a helmet, doesn't it? And uh, you know, we, we might have various helmets in our collection. Now, Tim and I talked about this a few weeks ago, and, hey, you want me to bring my, my, my fire helmet? I said, Sure. Um, and I thought, well, should I collect some other helmets? And I thought, nah, it's going to be too much work. But when you think of a helmet, maybe other than firefighter helmet, what's the first thing you think of? What do you think of protection? That, that's what it's there for. It protects our head for uh, very important reasons. And uh, sometimes when you think of a helmet, maybe you think of that helmet. Now, as you see, it's on the, on the left-hand side of the screen. And uh, you know, I thought, now what, what should I put on the right-hand side of the screen? Uh, you know, I thought blue, I thought purple, I thought red, I thought green. And I thought, no, because, you know, tomorrow, what, spring training starts tomorrow, I think, or, or it starts, uh, yeah, it starts already. So, uh, yeah, baseball season's right around the corner. So there we go. But, yeah, I mean... In football, you got to protect your head from that bazillion pound lineman who's coming after you. Um, and baseball helmet. Remember in Little League, guys, when you'd wear those helmets that were just like this, just covered your ears more or less? Yeah. 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 So, anyway. So sometimes we think of sports when we think of helmets. You know, hockey. We think of uh, other sports that use helmets, Equi the equestrian events all use helmets. And otherwise, you might think of a helmet in those terms. Now, I, I dug pretty far back in, the, in, in history to find that helmet. Uh, that's, yeah, I, I do remember that. I remember that, yeah. And I think I even remember Terry wearing that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Um, so yeah, we think of a motorcycle helmet, or maybe where our speed is is that you know, a bike helmet. Uh, you know, I just started wearing a bike helmet when we got it, when we stimulated the economy last spring and and got bikes, and uh, started to get some exercise. We even have bike helmets. Now it, it, it's kind of put too far away. Otherwise, I would have brought that and turned on the little blinky light on the back. There's a little button you push, and there's a blinky light on the back of my helmet. Ooh, how about that? Anyway, uh, sometimes when we think of a helmet, you know, okay, we, we have a firefighter helmet, and, uh, or we might think of Smokey the Bear. Only you can prevent forest fires. Mm, my voice isn't quite as low as it could be. <clears throat> anyway, um, or maybe you think of that when you think of a helmet. Sometimes you know, we, we need to be wearing a hard hat, even when we're just working in the yard. I know for me, sometimes I hit my head a little too much. So, uh, Or sometimes we think of this when we think of work and a helmet. Mm -hmm. It's all there for protection, even you know, when you're welding, your eyes. Uh, so important to, to protect that. Just a couple more. That's, that's a heavy-duty helmet. That... That brings up some thoughts about those who stand uh, in defense of, of our country yeah, and the military. Now, when we think about the helmet of salvation, though, don't we have fixed in our minds something that looks like that? When we talk about putting on the full armor of God, we've been kind of conditioned in our Sunday school-inspired uh, depiction of the armor of God to think that that's what the helmet should look like, right? Uh, that looks like it comes right out of the Crusades. Now, I got all these pictures of helmets for a reason. 
the reason is this. Obviously, it protects our head. So do we need to walk around with any of those kinds of helmets on our heads every day if we're going to bear the armor of God? Now, if you went wherever you go tomorrow and you had a helmet on and said, my pastor told me I had to wear that, people would look at you like you're nuts. As long as you had a mask on, on, we would be fine. See, that's why the medieval helmet is prime, isn't it? There we go. Yeah, yeah. Uh, So why is it then that we are told to put on, in this passage, the hope of salvation as a helmet? I think I know why. I think it's because Satan wants to try to get into our heads. And that's where a battle lies. When's the last time that you felt that Satan was trying to get into your head and control your thinking or maybe think that you're not good enough or that you have failed at this or your abilities are insufficient for that? See, a lot of times, yeah, that's exactly right. Fear and doubt and turning the truth of God into a lie, those are Satan's tools that he uses to get into our head. And I'm so glad that God told Paul to use the helmet of salvation as an illustration for us. He does it, obviously, in Ephesians 6, He does it here in 1 Thessalonians 5. That's where Paul used that illustration. The only other place in the scriptures that talks about a helmet, we we covered already back in January in Isaiah chapter 59. But when we talk about a helmet, we talk about the helmet of salvation. That's where we get the protection of God's love. What is the helmet of salvation? It's knowing what God has done for us in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's knowing that he took our place on the cross. He paid the penalty for our sin and death. And making that transaction for ourselves on our own behalf, when we confess our sins, when we recognize and acknowledge that Jesus took our place on the cross, when we believe in the gospel and we make it our own, walk of faith, our own life of faith, when we are saved, then we have the helmet of salvation. And it gives us the assurance that we need in order to walk with God and live the Christian life. What does it do? Well, it protects us from any of the accusations that the evil one would would put up against us. But why did God give it to us? This is kind of a review of two weeks ago. Without the helmet of salvation, we would have no right, no reason to put on the rest of the armor of God because we'd have no truth. We'd have no righteousness. We'd have no gospel. We would have no faith. Now, what moved God to give us the helmet of salvation? It's because of his love. He saw people perishing. That was the point of that message. But he demonstrates his own love for us in in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So knowing that about the helmet of salvation, what it is, what it does, why God gave it to us, let's turn to 1 Thessalonians 5 this morning and find out what the protective part of the helmet of salvation is. Now, all of this is wrapped around in God's love because God's love for people that were perishing That moved God to send Jesus and offer salvation to us. What does it give us? It gives us protection in the day of the Lord. Now, if we would read back in 1 Thessalonians 4, we'd find out about Paul's teaching about the end times. But he says here, Now, brothers, about times and dates, we do not need to write to you. Remember, oh, it was many years ago now, 
where there was a false prophet who said that, uh, that the world was going to end, Jesus was going to come, you know, I think it was the first Sunday in May years ago, and uh, I, I checked some of my more socially, uh, social networking aware brethren in the ministry who already had uh, a Facebook post up this morning of a big billboard that said, well, that was awkward. <laughs> when we were still here, Jesus had not come back. Um, brothers, about times and dates, we don't need to write to you. Now, the end is coming. And the helmet of salvation gives us protection in the day of the Lord because it comes like a thief in the night. We know that, verse 2, very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. We don't know when a thief is going to come, do we? Now, there are all kinds of tools out there today with technology that, you know, we can have motion sensors and we can have, um, we can have um, perimeter uh, detection when, when a perimeter is broken. We can have all kinds of alarms and alerts and all that stuff set up. We can have uh, alarms on our doors. Our kids will remember when we had alarms on our doors inside the house. <laughs> so we knew if they got up in the middle of the night. And... Uh, um, no, Ben says, no, nah, that wasn't for my room. It was more for the foster kids. So anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, we don't expect a thief to come in the night either way, because you know what? Some of those things can be thwarted or batteries can run out of juice. Um, the day of the Lord, yeah, we don't expect, and sometimes we're not protected, but what we do know is that when we know the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, when we live in Him, when we have the helmet of salvation on, we have protection in the day of the Lord. Because what we see in, in verse 3 is very true. While people are saying peace and safety, destruction will come on them suddenly as labor pains on a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. Peace and safety. Peace and safety. Oh, don't we want world peace? Don't we want safety? And, you know, we, we, we snicker about the multiple layers of, of you know, you, you've seen the pictures of about 12 masks on people and, and all that stuff. And, you know, that's how we're going to be safer. A vaccine is going to make us, whatever is going to make us safe, but we're not really sure. What's that really doing? It's, it's playing on our fear. And what people want the most is to not have any reason to fear. In the end times, when there is physical fear of harm to our person or to our family, that's the context here of the end times, when God is going to execute his judgment on the world. This destruction is going to come when peace and safety is assumed. Hey, everything's right with the world. Nobody's mad at each other. Everybody has what everybody has. There is one government. There is one economy. There is one church. Everybody is just getting along with one another. Ha, ah, isn't this nice? It's going to happen. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me just a moment. Dry spot. It, isn't that nice? <coughs> God's word says all that's going to happen. But what does the helmet of salvation do for us? We don't have to worry about it because, what? We are already in the ark. We have that means of escape. If we know the Lord Jesus Christ and we read back in the chapter 4, we find out that the trumpet will sound. The Lord himself will come. The trumpet will sound. And those who are, what? The dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with him in the air. And what? And so we will be with the Lord forever. The helmet of salvation 
gives us. <coughs> Excuse me. Salvation gives us that security. It gives us that rescue from the day of the Lord when he executes judgment and destruction on the world. They will not escape. We who know Jesus do. Praise God for that. That's the protection of God's love. And we accept Jesus as our Savior, and we have the helmet of salvation firmly fixed on our head. Yeah. We, we win. We're saved from that judgment. What else does the protection of God's love do? What else does the helmet of salvation do for us? Verse 4. But you, brothers, are not in darkness, so that this day should surprise you like a thief. You are all sons of the light and sons of the day. We do not belong to the night or to darkness. So what do we, what do we find out about this? Protection from darkness. I have a, uh, I have a, it's not a helmet, but it's kind of like a headset with a little flashlight on the front. I find it especially helpful when we're camping outside at night. And uh, I got a dog here, and I got another arm on a walking stick or something, and, and then what do I hold the flashlight with? You know, you, you know how it is. Sometimes you're walking around outside, and your flashlight's going everywhere, but where you want to see where you're going. Darkness can, can trip you up. But in Christ, we're not in darkness. But you, brothers, are not in darkness so that this day should surprise you like a thief. No, we have the light of God's word. And wearing the helmet of salvation, we might as well have that headlamp right on there, kind of like a miner's helmet, right? This day won't surprise us. Why? We're all sons of the light and sons of the day. We do not belong to the night, and we do not belong to the darkness. Where do those thoughts of insufficiency or inadequacy or doubt or fear, where do they come from? They come from Satan. They come from the pit of hell. They come from darkness. But brothers and sisters, those of us who know Jesus as Savior, we are not in darkness and we do not belong to the darkness. So many times we're when we're reminded of what we maybe used to be, no, rather, we are children of the light and children of the day. Verse 8 tells us that. But first we want to look at verse 7. Because you know what? Darkness and sleepiness and drunkenness belong to the darkness. Belongs to the night. Those who sleep, sleep at night. Those who get drunk, get drunk at night. So then, let's... Think about that for just a minute. How does the helmet of salvation protect us from darkness? Well, we don't belong to Satan. He is the prince of darkness masquerading as a bearer of light. He likes to twist the truth of God and make it into a lie. He likes to be the author of doubt and fear. We're not in darkness. We don't belong that. We are children of the light. God is light. He doesn't masquerade in darkness. He doesn't want us to hide our light under a bushel basket. He wants us to shine because we are children of the day. I have, uh, I have many years of law enforcement chaplaincy experience and I think out of 30-some years in law enforcement chaplaincy, I think I can still count on one hand the number of calls that I have responded to in the daylight. Most of the calls that I responded to have been in darkness. Interesting that bad things often happen under the cover of darkness. You 
know what? The helmet of salvation protects us from that darkness. It doesn't allow Satan to play with our head. He can try, and maybe sometimes if we have taken our helmet off or we've lifted up our mask or or taken the eye protection away, whatever it is, maybe, yeah, maybe we will have some things sneak in unawares. But when we remember that we have this helmet to put on, because we belong to Jesus, we belong to the day. We belong to light. Darkness and sleepiness has no sway over us. So how do we wear, then, the helmet of salvation? I'm going to spend the rest of our time looking at that. How, then, do we wear the helmet of salvation? Now, the first thing, we need to go back to verse 6. You might notice that we, we skipped that. We did that for this reason. So then, well, that, that's a good reason. It's almost as good as a therefore, but that's coming up, okay? Um, so then, let us not be like others who are asleep, but let us be alert and self-controlled. Now, some translations uh, put it, uh, be awake and sober. Now, isn't it interesting that here in verse 6, we see one of the fruit of the Spirit? Oh, because we've been talking about ex you know, including the fruit of the Spirit in wearing the armor of God, self-control. Hmm, yeah. When we wear the helmet of salvation, we do have the Holy Spirit in us, and we have the ability to be self-controlled. Let's not be asleep, but let's be alert and self-controlled. Sometimes when we fall asleep, um, we aren't aware of what's going on all around us. Sometimes we can be asleep with our eyes open and our ears open, and we're just not paying attention. But sometimes we get jolted out of our slumber. We get on the alert right away. But we ought to be self-controlled all the time. That's one thing that... the Helmet of salvation gives us. It gives us the ability to not be self-controlled, that it depends on ourselves, but it depends on what? The Holy Spirit alive in us to help us to be awake. We see those, um, that, that word sober. Now, it doesn't necessarily take on the English meaning of uh, the l sobriety as in lack of intoxication. Uh, being sober means to not have any, let's put it this way, being under the control of the Holy Spirit, having nothing else controlling you other than the Lord and his Holy Spirit. What's next? Belong to the day. But since we belong to the day, oh, here's that self-controlled again. Huh, yeah, we belong to the day. Not that we can't go out at night. I know some of us don't like to go out at night, but we belong to the day. We should be following that which is exposed by the light. And since we belong to the day, and since we live in a time when darkness seems to be creeping in on every aspect of what is right and true, we need to expose the deeds of darkness. We belong to the day. Let's walk in the day. Let's live in the day. Let's shine light as though we belong to the day. So let's be self-controlled. And then we have to add one thing to this because verse 8 does. We have to put on that helmet of salvation in conjunction with what? Faith and love. How many times do we get into a heated discussion with somebody who just doesn't get it, who doesn't know any better, who wants to keep on advancing an agenda of, of filth, more or less, and darkness, and we just like to take them and clobber them? Yeah, but you know what? We can't do that. Uh, oh, there's that self-controlled thing. Uh, putting on faith and love as a breastplate. Ah, putting on faith and love as a breastplate. 
Hmm. What did we just get talking, done talking about a couple of weeks ago? Uh, the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the fiery darts of Satan? Yeah. That's your first line of defense, the shield of faith. And put on love as a breastplate, the breastplate of righteousness. So we talked about that right after the belt of truth. Hmm. We don't have any righteousness of our own, but it's only because of God's love for us in Christ that we have a right relationship with him. And that can be the basis of a right relationship with other people. So with the help, with the hope of salvation as a helmet, we wear that in conjunction with faith and love. Hmm. Paul takes a little bit of a break here. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Hmm. He finishes up this contrast between being children of light and not walking in darkness. He says, you know what? It, it comes down to this. We either receive salvation or we're going to suffer wrath. God did not appoint us, those of us who believe in Jesus, we're not appointed to suffer wrath. We're appointed to receive salvation. And we already know that there's no escape from that day of the Lord. Verse 10. You see, he died for us. He died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, now he borrows that from chapter 4, where he talks about those who have fallen asleep in the Lord. We don't have to worry about them. In other words, that um, those who have already died, or whether we're awake, those of us who are alive at the coming of the Lord, whether we are awake or are asleep, we may live together with him. Hmm. The helmet of salvation. It gives us, it gives us even that. It's hope not just for today, but it's hope for tomorrow. And it's hope for eternity. He died for us once for all. And that suffering and death and burial and resurrection is effective not only now, but it's effective for all of eternity. We may live together with the Lord Jesus. I look forward to the day when I see him face to face. And, and maybe we'll see him in the clouds. Maybe we'll hear that trumpet call. Maybe. But you know what? We can live together with him now in a sense by spending that time with him, by depending on him in the good times as well as the bad times, doing the easy things and, and doing the hard things. We may live together with him. Have you made that decision to live together with the Lord Jesus? If you have, therefore, oh, here it is, therefore. What's it there for? Why do we have the helmet of salvation anyway? Is it all about us? No, it's not all about us, but rather it's about one another. Look at this. First, whoops. Hit the middle button. It's not good to hit the middle button. There we go. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up. Encourage one another, first of all. Encourage. What does it mean to encourage? It means to come alongside someone and not just help them feel better, but breathe some hope into them to give them a little more wind in their sails, so to speak. Encourage one another. And you know what? When it comes suddenly, that's kind of cool. Just like Jesus, when he comes like a thief in the night, isn't it cool if suddenly we could just appear out of nowhere and shoot someone a text or message on Facebook or do it the old-fashioned way, phone call? 
or, or a letter, a note. Yeah. Wow. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up. That comes next. Build each other up. Build each other up. How do we build each other up? Well, it's the opposite of what we see going on in the world so much. It's tearing each other down. Rather than taking, taking a baseball bat and knocking someone off the pedestal that they put up for themselves or that you put them on, build them up. Hey, you know what? I really appreciate the fact that you are faithful. I appreciate the fact that you take time to, to talk with me. I appreciate the fact that you have fill in the blank, whatever it is that someone else has done with and for you. Do that for somebody. Build them up. Just in fact, just as in fact you are doing. We have a few more messages on the armor of God. Then it'll be Palm Sunday. And then we'll celebrate Jesus' resurrection. Voices of Peace are going to come and sing for us. And then we're going to take up a series of messages on the one another's in the Bible. And the one another's. I think we need this more now than ever before. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ has been isolated from itself for a while. And now that it looks like things are winding down in terms of this pandemic, the time is coming when we can and we need to be back together as much as possible. It's coming, but you know, no matter whether it doesn't come, we still need to therefore encourage one another and build each other up, just as in fact you are doing. And so we need to do that biblically. And so we're going to get into a study about you know, six weeks from now, we're going to get into a study on the one another's in the scripture. How can we how can we be obedient to the one another's in God's word? It's going to be kind of fun. But it all is possible because of what? The protection of God's love, the helmet of salvation that he gives to us so that who doesn't get into our head? So that Satan doesn't get into our head. So that the Lord Jesus Christ and the control of the Holy Spirit can be preeminent. You got the helmet? Now, if Tim was going to go out and fight a fire, he was going to be wearing this. And it would protect him from anything falling from the top and front to the side, and it would keep the water from going down his back. You wearing the helmet of salvation to protect you from the thoughts and the fears and the doubts and the fiery darts. Oh, that's what the shield of faith is for. But just in case your arm gets tired, the helmet's there to keep Satan from getting into your head. Rather, study, read, pray, worship, fellowship. And you'll be assured of the protection of God's love. Father, thank you. Thank you that you love us. Thank you, Father, that we are given the victory in the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, thank you that that victory was accomplished already, but the battle goes on. Father, help us to put on the helmet of salvation and experience the warmth and the protection of your love for us. And help us, Lord, to live as children of light, shining the light of your love so that others would not be taken captive by that which would keep them in darkness. Lord, show us. Show us the benefits of wearing the helmet of salvation this week and help us to extend those benefits to those that you put across our paths. For the honor and glory of the Lord Jesus, in whose name we pray.